Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem. Largest odd number in string. We're given a string number representing a large integer and we want to return the largest valued odd integer that is a substring of this number. If there aren't any odd integers, we can return the empty string. And when we do return the integer, we want to return it in the form of a string. So if it were one, two, three, we'd return it as a string, not as a number. Let's get into the problem. Let's talk quickly about like a brute force solution. One thing to notice is that this number will only have digits. There won't be any leading zeros and there won't be any like negative symbols. So this is going to be a positive integer. Suppose the input string was something like this for simplicity. So you might think that the brute force solution would be to find every possible odd number that we can make from this string. And to do that, of course, we know that a number is considered odd. Well, I guess the simplest way would be just to look at like the ones place. That will always tell you whether it's odd or even. So in this case, the ones place is three. That means it's odd. If it were four, that means it's even. The rest of the other digits don't really matter. So that's kind of the first thing to notice. Here we can see this is odd, this is odd, this is odd, and this is odd. For example, with this five, what are all the odd numbers we could make? Well, five itself is odd. We could make 45, that's odd. Three, four, five is odd. Two, et cetera, et cetera. This is odd as well. Now, we are trying to return the largest valued odd integer. So you kind of start to feel dumb going through every possible integer where five is in the ones place because you realize that every time we add a digit, of course, we're making it better. This is like a two digit number. And now this is a three digit number. Since they're always positive, of course, we want more digits. So anytime we have an odd digit, we want to take the substring from all the way at the beginning of this string up until that odd digit. For example, if we were to iterate through this from left to right, we'd see, okay, one is odd. Okay, so this is a candidate. Then we'd get to two, this is not odd. Then we'd get to three, this is odd. So this is another possible solution. And of course, this one is gonna be bigger because the ones place, this odd digit came further to the right than this one. And at this point, you kind of start to notice, okay, four, not odd. Then we get to five, it's odd. And of course, this one is gonna be bigger than any that we have seen before. So if we were to try to solve this problem going from left to right, the last odd digit that we end with, which in this case is gonna be seven, that up until the beginning of the string is going to be the result. And once you realize that, you think that maybe there's a shortcut to solve this problem. Well, this solution itself is already big O of N because clearly we only have to iterate over this string once, but maybe we can do it more efficiently because we know we want the odd digit that is furthest to the right in this input string. So why start at the left when we could start at the right? Because when we start at the right, the first odd digit that we see, then we know for sure this is gonna be included in the result. We pretty much found the result at this point because we're gonna take the substring from the beginning all the way up until this seven, and that's gonna be the result. So the way I'm gonna solve this problem is by doing exactly that, starting at the right, and continuing until we find an odd digit. If this weren't to exist, then we would have stopped here. We would have skipped the six because it's even. And since five is odd, we will take this substring and that's gonna be the result. Now, in the worst case, we might still have to iterate over the entire string to find an odd digit or maybe an odd digit won't even exist. So the time complexity is still gonna be big O of N. Memory complexity is technically O of one if we don't count the return value as extra space. So now let's code this up. So what I'm gonna do is start at the right, basically just iterate over this string in reverse order. So I'm gonna have a pointer I in range. We're gonna start at the end of the string, so length of num minus one, and then keep going up until the beginning of the string, which in Python you do it like this. We keep going and we'll stop before we get to negative one and we'll be decrementing by one each time. And then for us to check, digit by digit, we're checking num at index i. Is this odd? For us to figure that out, we have to first convert it from a string into an integer. So we do that, and then we check if it's odd by simply modding it by two. If we get a positive, if we get one as a remainder, it's odd. If we don't get one as a remainder, it's not odd. So 
This is the way to check if it's odd. And if it's odd, that means we found the solution, remember. So we are going to return it. What are we going to return? We're going to return the substring from the beginning of num all the way up until i plus one, not including i plus one, because in Python, that's just how substrings work. This is a slice and this is non-inclusive. It stops at i, not i plus one. This is what we're going to return. If we never end up returning from this if statement out here, what do you think we should return? Well, we were told to return an empty string, so that's what we're gonna do. Now let's go ahead and run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's about as efficient as we can get it to be. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.